What's up guys, Action here. Samsung's first Galaxy A series phone to be launched for 2020 is the Galaxy A51R. I was using it as my primary phone for some time and I feel it's a pretty good phone which got the pricing wrong. Now for a phone to be a good option, it should have good design and build, internals, camera, battery, etc. which all together will provide a good user experience. And here with the Galaxy A51, let's check all these factors so that we'll get an idea how well Samsung did with all these factors. We'll start things with the design and build quality and here the material choices are not the ideal ones for a phone with this price tag but actually when you pick up the Galaxy A51, it doesn't feel cheap. The device is very sturdy and nice to hold because of the curved side edges and also since it's a slim phone measuring just 7.9mm. This back panel is a fingerprint and scratch magnet and here it's not easily visible because of the color of this phone which is white. Now if I would have gone for the black one, well it might be more visible. So for me, I feel this is the color to go if you don't want that scratches to be visible. Now taking a close look at the back panel, well here there is this pattern which I really like and also you get the rainbow effect when light falls on this panel. This camera module is a contrast but in person it looks good and also it doesn't protrude out a lot and here during the testing period I didn't use any case and still the camera lens isn't scratched even though the phone wobbles when you lay it on a table. And also one more thing to note is that the phone has a bit of heft than usual plastic phones and I feel it might be a reason this feels better than other plastic phones. But here you won't be misled because this panel does feel like plastic so there is no way we'll be confused this for a glass back phone. And now for the side rail, well it has held up well and here the buttons, they are all on the right side and the power button is positioned somewhat in the middle and hence it's a natural reach and all these buttons are tactile and is working well. And about the display glass use, it's Gorilla Glass 3 and even though there isn't any scratches on my unit, I would always suggest to get a tempered glass screen guard. So overall for the design and build quality, I like it and also the device feels well put together with no gaps or flex and therefore I feel it's gonna hold well. And now checking the SIM slot, it supports two nano SIMs which are both Volti supported and also there is a dedicated SD card slot which is a great thing. And for the ports available, you get a USB-C charging port which is now a standard and there is a rare non-standard becoming thing here which is the headphone jack. The quality from this headphone jack is for some reason average but still the flexibility of having one is nice and you also get a microphone and the only speaker which is all on the bottom section. Now this microphone quality is good and therefore if you make a lot of calls then this phone won't disappoint you because here the earpiece used also sounds great and hence the call experience was overall really good. And about the single speaker, it has good sound quality and loudness and if you don't accidentally cover it then you can enjoy the sound from the speaker even in a moderately noisy environment. And now checking the display, it's a Full HD Plus 6.5 inch S AMOLED Infinity O display. This is a gorgeous display and that's all thanks to the really good quality panel used by Samsung. Now if media consumption is your main priority, this display is one of the best. The colors are not very saturated but on the other hand is more true and therefore I felt it's much more enjoyable. The resolution is 2400 by 1080 p which gives a pixel density of approximately 405 ppi and overall I did like this panel a lot especially for the price. I mean just take a close look at the hole punch cutout. It's so precise and here I feel this setup is any day better than a notch. And also the display gets bright enough so using it outdoors on a bright sunny day is not an issue. And overall for the display and its quality, I would say A plus for the price. And here there is one more thing under this display which is the fingerprint scanner. This is an optical fingerprint scanner and here the accuracy is mostly spot on and the speed is better than the previous Galaxy A50. It works most of the time without much issues and I do like the fact that these type of fingerprint scanners are getting popular and better and maybe after a couple of generations it would become almost perfect. So overall till now things are good with the Galaxy A51. So let's move on to one of the hyped factors for this device and that's the cameras. Here the number of cameras available is 5, but in the front you get one camera which is a 32 megapixel f2.2 wide angle camera which can be switched between a wide angle shot or close up one. Samsung's front camera always has a wider frame of capture which is really a great thing and here it's the same thing. And for the shots captured with this camera, well it's crisp with good sharpness if the lighting is good and therefore if you're clicking selfies in good lighting, you will like it. But when the lighting is dull, the shots do get soft and it's like more processing is done and the selfies turns out to be average. And overall the front camera is a good one and probably most of the shots will be fine if you manage to take it under good lighting. And actually same is the case with the videos captured with the front camera. The video you're seeing right now is recorded with the front camera of the Galaxy A51 so you get the idea about the video quality as well as the audio quality. But here, more than the front camera, the much hype has went into the rear cameras which are four cameras with different resolutions and they are all here for different types of shots. And here the main sensor is a pretty good one with which you can click some great shots in proper lit conditions and also shots in not so good lighting actually turns out to be good. And overall I did like the shots that the main sensor captured. And here the next camera I'm gonna focus on is the ultra wide angle camera. For me I feel it's a very useful camera because without even moving a bit backwards 
We can just fit in more into the frame and yeah, the shots are pretty nice, especially outdoor shots during daytime and I love this ultra wide angle camera option. Now if you take shots indoors in dull lighting, well the ultra wide angle camera does show quality degradation but then you can switch to the main sensor to make the shots look much better. And yeah, the cameras left are the macro camera and the depth sensing camera. And with that, well, you can capture not so bad portrait shots as well as very close macro shots. Now, these are like additional benefits, but they have their weaknesses like macro shots needs proper lighting and also portraits are sometimes hit and miss. And also, by the way, the shutter speed is fast and therefore the shots are captured quickly. So now for the videos, well, if you want EIS to work, keep the resolution to 1080p and if your hands are stable enough, the videos captured are enjoyable ones. And overall for the price, I feel Samsung has done a pretty good job with the rear cameras. And yeah, if cameras are your main priority, then this phone won't disappoint you. Well, Samsung did focus on the cameras and to an extent, they do stand up to that. But for a phone to be a good option, there is one more main core thing, which is actually the center of all these functionings. And that's the internals like the processor, RAM, etc. And here with the Galaxy A51, the processor used is the Exynos 9611, which is an octa core processor, which has four performance cores and four efficiency cores. Well, this processor is not a high-end processor, but it's kind of a mid-range one. And here you can actually see that while using the phone. Day-to-day -day tasks like web browsing, messaging, Instagram, all of that work without any issues. But here and there, you will notice slight hiccups. It doesn't affect the usage. And actually, you can also play high-end games without much frame drops, even though the loading time is a bit on the higher side. And one more thing here is that, even after using the phone for an extended period of time, the phone didn't get too hot. And now for the RAM management, it's pretty good where mostly 7 to 8 apps do stay open in the memory. And that's all because of the 6 GB RAM used. And also since there is 128 GB storage available, and that combined with the ability to expand it with SD card, you won't face any storage issues too. So overall about the internals, well, the user experience is not bad. And therefore, if you're a light to average user, things are going to be smooth. But if you're a heavy user, well, then you might notice the performance issues. I feel Samsung did cut costs with the processor, and that's the main drawback of this phone for the price. Because here, even the rest of the stuff like battery life is pretty excellent, where you can get two days of battery life if you're a light user, and if you're a heavy user, at the end of the day, you'll be having approximately 25 to 30 percent of the battery left. And here, since you get a fast charger rate at 15 watts, the charging time is not bad. If you charge the phone for 30 minutes, it will top up 30 percent of the battery. And also Samsung's new UI is actually a clean one. Here it's one UI 2, which means the Android version is Android 10. Now the security patch update is of December, but based on the previous experience from the Galaxy A50, I think a security patch update should be available soon. Now there are usual Samsung issues with the software like a lot of bloatware is pre-installed, but most of them can be deleted. And one minor thing which out of the box is annoying is that the power key is now called side key, and on pressing and holding it, well, it doesn't turn off the device, but instead it activates Bixby. This can be changed to normal power off setting, but still it's a minor factor that was annoying out of the box. So I guess that's all about the Galaxy A51. And like I said at the beginning, this is a good phone which got the pricing wrong, and that's mainly because of the processor. Everything else seems to be either good or even great for the price. And if Samsung wanted to price the A51 in the 24,000 price bracket, well, they should have given better performance. So my verdict as of now is that if you're planning to get the A51, maybe wait for a couple of months and you might see a price drop. And if it reaches in the 20,000 price range, then this phone will be a great one. And there are chances that that can happen because last year the A50 was initially launched for 20,000, but after a couple of months, the price did go down. But as of now, if you don't mind much about performance and also you're not worried about the pricing, what you get with the A51 is a pretty good phone, which has a great display, really good cameras, nice speaker, great earpiece, best battery life, etc. And with the A51, you will enjoy the experience, even though it's slightly overpriced. That's up for this video, guys. Hope you liked it. If so, please do hit the like button and also please don't forget to subscribe. See you again in the next one. Till then, bye.